Hey guys, it's Mitch. How's it going? We're switching up the schedule a little bit. This was originally meant to be a Wildcats issue, actually, but then I looked at the calendar to see where this was going to be falling and went, oh shit, this is the Christmas video. Well, we can't just do Jim Lee, like standard issue Jim Lee, Wildcats number nine on Christmas. You know, we'll do that a little bit later. We got to do something a little bit special for this. So instead, we're going to do what if number seven. So this is what if Wolverine was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. And what if he was drawn by Rob Liefeld? So, just before we get into it, if you enjoy the channel, if you feel like you might want to help out a little bit, what you can do is, in the description, there's a link to my Patreon, and if you subscribe there, that'll give you access to everything I do, from the Blood Force stuff to the YouTube videos before they get uploaded to YouTube, as well as some Patreon-exclusive content. So, here we are. It's December of 1989. Rob Liefeld has been working for the Big Two for just over a year. He started on Hawk and Dove in uh, October of 1988. Well, I mean, like, that's not when he started, but that's when the issue came out anyway. And that experience probably didn't go the way he wanted it to, uh, I, I, particularly since on the last issue he did on that particular series, um, the pages that he submitted, all done horizontally, by the way, were recut because the editor wasn't going to stand for just random horizontal in an issue. So took a razor blade to him, separated them out, and then uh, rearranged them vertically. And Rob Liefeld just would have been like 21, 22 years old around that time, but it wouldn't surprise me if he's already got a bit of an ego. So he moves over to Marvel. He does a couple of fill-in things on things like X-Factor and uh, Marvel Comics Presents. And in addition to those, he also has a buddy named Jim Valentino working on What If. What, uh, Jim Valentino is in solid with the editor for that particular title. So if you look at any of the early What If issues, Jim Valentino's name is all over those things, either as the artist or the writer. So that was kind of his way of guaranteeing himself work, I think. And he's kind of doing a little bit of both on this one. Jim Valentino is the writer on this. He's also doing layouts for Rob. And I think the results are some of Rob's best work, like right at the beginning of his Marvel career. So let's start off with this cover here. Uh, I think this is one of the better Liefeld covers, period. And again, undoubtedly laid out by uh, Valentino. Just going off of the pose here to start, in that it looks, you know, fairly naturalistic. Everything kind of, the proportions mostly work. Although, uh, Wolverine's head's a bit large, but that's fine. But like, these are the best hands that Liefeld has ever drawn. The torso is like a regularly shaped one. <laughs> Although, I wonder if this didn't start something, because this could be interpreted a little bit as a boob shelf. If you kind of take Wolverine's right arm out of the picture here, you know, like it makes sense with how his torso is kind of canted, but given that Liefeld doesn't understand things like nuance, I could see that kind of going over his head and going, okay, wait a minute, so when I'm drawing a guy in, in kind of like, profile, then I put his boobs going way the fuck out over here, and his torso going under him. Okay, got it. I'm not saying this kind of kicked off things like the Captain America drawing. I just wonder if it kind of planted the seed a little bit. I don't have any real kind of verification, but I did take a look through the Hawk and Dove stuff that preceded this. I don't see any boob shelves in those. And as we can see here, this one is going to be inked by Scott Williams, not just on the cover, in the interior as well. So Rob's getting a shit ton of help for what's pretty much his debut at this point, I think. At least for Marvel. Alright, so let's open this puppy up. So we're going to start off, we're going to get a typical what-if kind of opening. Where we get a bit of a breakdown on what our subject is in this case. So, I mean, in this case, it's really just kind of breaking down who Wolverine is. And presenting you with the concept that there are alternate realities where... Uh, the Wolverine we know evolved differently than events we, we've seen previously. Decent pose of Wolverine here. Nothing really to complain about. I mean, the Eagle Crest is pretty bad. But, I mean, who cares? I, I, this is the first time I'm even noticing it, and I'm, I've read this a couple of times. Uh, the Watcher here, I'm going to assume this is almost entirely uh, Valentino. Because I've never seen Rob try to do shadows like that before. But, no, decent opening. Better. 2-3 splash. I have to say, this is impressive. For Liefeld, knowing how little detail he likes to put on a page, this is him going for that Art Adams 
level of line work. You know, he's not, you know, really anywhere close, I don't think, but like he's, he's trying his ass off here. I'm sure the Valentino uh, plotting helps quite a bit. So he doesn't have to figure out where everybody is. I mean, look at everybody's on the right plane. Looks correct. This is by far the best Hulk I've seen Liefeld do. This hand is a mess, but I mean, I, I, to me, that just proves that Liefeld drew it because he still has problems with hands. At, back at this point, he, he, it would have been a, a just barely publishable, probably. But this is probably the first 2-3 splash that I've seen Liefeld do where it was worth a splash. And the Watcher's going to give us the breakdown about Logan's history some more, about how he was uh, Weapon X first, of course. Well, I mean, th this is an interesting time to be uh, giving Wolverine's origin at this point. Um, because they didn't know a whole lot. We're still two years away from Barry Windsor Smith's Weapon X uh, storyline in Marvel Comics Presents. There isn't really an origin to go into for Wolverine. All they know about him was that he started out uh, helping out the Canadian government, because he's Canadian himself, which I think is a point of pride for a very, very few Canadian comic book collectors. <laughs> it, I, I think it's, it's funny that... Um, because, um, you know, he, he got brought onto the team in Giant Size X-Men, number one, right? And you think of the, the concept of that team was, let's bring in people from all sorts of backgrounds. And so we get, you know, we're made up Storm from Africa, and uh, Thunderbird is Native American, and Colossus from Russia, Nightcrawler from Germany. And hey, there's that Canadian character. Throw him in the fucking mix, too. Is he a mutant? Be sure, he is now. And of course, here we're going back to uh, Wolverine's first appearance. No whiskers on the mask, though. That's a bit of a shame. But, I mean, you know, Liefeld's only going to go so far. Wolverine's supposed to be badass. Uh, y you can't be badass and then have, like, whiskers drawn on your mask. It's not okay. So, in this alternate reality, after dealing with the Hulk and Wendigo, S.H.I.E.L.D. arrives on the scene. So, they've been uh, having discussions with Alpha Flight. And Alpha Flight has agreed to loan Logan to S.H.I.E.L.D. for a special mission. Logan's a little bit too badass to just agree to that, though, without hearing the terms first. We're going to get some goofiness in here. That stance is pretty bad. Very much like some of the stuff he would do later on in New Mutants. And you just know, if we were looking at this from the front, boom shelf, he's trying shit out. So from there, we jump to the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier. Which, again, I have to assume is 100% Valentino. I can't even imagine Liefeld trying to draw this thing. Nice sky in the background, too, here. So, the mission that they need Wolverine for is that Hydra has been deploying all sorts of life model decoys, which is essentially like synth replacements for people. And S.H.I.E.L.D. is having difficulty detecting them, so they decided to bring in Wolverine because, uh, he, you know, he's got his enhanced senses. It's interesting. The mention of um, Wolverine's senses powers got me wondering about when exactly that got introduced. Because I know that a, Wolverine, the character, kind of got built in stages. I mean, when he was first introduced, I don't think there was any mention that he was a mutant. And most of his powers weren't actually described. He was just a little guy with claws who was elusive. And there was some sort of indication of super strength of some kind. It was more that he was animalistic. So I looked it up online to just see what the progression is. There's an actual um, article about it, which was interesting to find. So, like, from his first appearance, it's not for a couple of years that they really openly talk about having enhanced senses. And that's also around the same time when you find out that the claws aren't part of the gloves, that they're actually in his arms. And it's not until another year or so after that that we find out he has an adamantium skeleton, and then another year after that, we find out about the healing factor. So Wolverine really is one of those characters where they just kind of kept piling on the powers, uh, probably as he grew in popularity. Which again is interesting, particularly considered um, in comparison with the other characters got introduced in Giant Size X-Men number one, where Colossus, Storm, and Nightcrawler are, are pretty much produced in full form. So not knowing the things about Wolverine was really kind of baked into the mix. It's interesting to see this early uh, glare from Liefeld that just doesn't have the same kind of line count that he would generate later on. It's, you know, it's fine. 
It's just interesting seeing the earlier version of him, the pupae. So Fury clarifies that he wants Wolverine to sniff out these life model decoys and destroy them on sight. And Wolverine replies by immediately slashing open Dum Dum Dugan after giving a, a very typical for the time creepy Liefeld smile. Decent shot here though. Um, given how much of uh, Rob's stuff I've seen early on, like the stuff he was doing in New Mutants, I wonder if being friends with Valentino, he was able to kind of talk him into doing some bigger panels. So they find out at that point, Dum Dum Dugan was in fact one of those decoys. And Wolverine and Black Widow are going to go search out that Hydra base and take care of those uh, the, the synths. Again, it's all decent stuff. There's nothing wrong with the panel construction. So, I mean, uh, Valentino's doing an alright job setting this up for him. Although, we do get the typical Liefeld death scream. That's how you know somebody's dead when their jaw opens as far as humanly possible. All right, so now we're going to cut to the Hydra base where Wolverine and Black Widow are sneaking in. And would you look at that with, like, the depth of that shot? We've got a little bit of perspective going on in the floor. Everybody's on the same level. Everything makes sense, like the proportion of these guys to these guys. I like to think about what would have happened if, uh, you know, Valentino had kept doing breakdowns for Rob, except that I kind of know what would have happened and that Rob would have gotten lazier about it. It's not that he would have learned anything from Val, he would have just started going into autopilot and putting in less lines. And I know that because past performance is the greatest indicator of future results. In Hawk and Dove, when Carl Kessel started correcting Rob Liefeld's artwork, Rob Liefeld replied to this, not by learning how to draw better, but by submitting artwork with less detail. So without hands and feet and without backgrounds, because he figured Carl Kessel would finish it for him. Anyway, so Wolverine and Black Widow leap down. They make pretty short work of all the, the, uh, the bots here. Nice, big, reasonably cool shot here. Fair amount of dudes in there. Not a single circular featureless head to be found. Again, just kind of backing it up that uh, this is probably the best work of Rob's career. At the end, there's one guy left. Black Widow's about to take him out when Wolverine stops her because he senses that this dude is, no, is not a synth. I don't know if that was referencing something in the comics. It might have been, thinking about it now. Like that was some sort of tragedy that lingered over Black Widow. I don't even know. It's an interesting little uh, side note then, if it is. And at the end of the fight, Black Widow's kind of tossing her hair around. Logan uh, offers to take care of that for her. Again, kind of a typical creepy Liefeld shot. So they go back to the helicarrier to debrief with Nick Fury. They've wiped out all of the LMDs. Nice shot here. With just the right amount of detail to show that they're in a conference room. Not too bad. And Wolverine decides that he's willing to stick around and help out S.H.I.E.L.D. going forward. And the next plan is to go after Hydra's Central Command. So, Wolverine and uh, Black Widow, with short hair now, are going to be a, a, their own unit, while Fury leads the assault team. Again, it's just interesting seeing how much detail is in these shots compared to what Rob would do like two years from now. So, S.H.I.E.L.D. busts into Hydra Central Command. Hydra sends a bunch of their foot soldiers to take care of them. They get cut down pretty easily. Decent shot of Black Widow doing some kind of martial arts stuff. A little too twisted, but that's all. That's fine. I mean, you know, we've seen worse. Charging a very Dutch angle, but still kind of an ineffectual shot because of how small everybody is. Yeah, again, you know that's not Rob's decision. So they keep cutting their way through so many dudes. Who's doing the letters on this? Okay, Ken Lopez. I feel like I've heard that name before because some of these are pretty lame. We get actual choos. Your typical blam blam, but again, again, very small. Same thing here. There was a balam here. I, I assume that's a that's a delayed sort of uh, sonic boom kind of thing. Anyway, they make their way to the main command room here, where mm, a character I can almost name. 
Shit, I don't know who this is. And I, I feel like I'm, I should get yelled at for that. But I never read Nick Fury comics or Captain America. I feel like that might have come up there as well. Anyway, they break into the office here. Black Widow looks pretty good. Wolverine does not. This is like the beginning of the cable balding old men that Liefeld likes to draw. Anyway, they bust in, and it's Baron Von Strucker, and he's got Dum Dum Dugan strung up. And this feels like a pure Liefeld page. Giant image, big close-up on Wolverine's eyes. Not a whole lot going on besides. So Von Strucker threatens him with the Satan Claw. And Wolverine leaps in. Mm, I mean, we've seen Liefeld do this shot before, and usually he rips off like Jim Lee or Kevin McGuire. Whatever that Guy Gardner shot is. For that kind of thing, this feels uh, a bit more like he looked at it and then tried to do his own version at least. So that's something. But he slashes off the Satan Claw while Black Widow takes care of the woman whose name I can't remember. So Wolverine's about to deliver the killing blow when Fury steps in because this is personal. And Fury and Von Strucker go at it. Not a great panel showing it. But, I mean, you know, I, I, I think Jim's been doing pretty good so far up to this point. We can let him get away with a couple. Von Strucker gets the upper hand. But Fury's able to direct his uh, arm socket into an electrical outlet, and that's going to actually just fry Von Strucker. So after that, S.H.I.E.L.D. cleans up. Uh, pretty half-assed looking page here. I mean, this panel took a fair bit. And then, yeah, there's not, not a whole lot going on here. The only thing here that's even recognizably Liefeld is the fucking screen doors. So after this... Uh, the Canadian government agrees to release uh, Logan to S.H.I.E.L.D. if he decides he wants to join them. He does. So, from there, he's going to fight alongside Fury and Widow and Captain America, and they're going to take down MODOK and AIM. And again, um, interesting shot of the Watcher. That isn't anything Liefeld ever drew. But, like, look how much more dynamic this particular montage is compared to, like, any kind of cover that Liefeld puts together these days. We cut to what I assume is a couple of years later, where Professor Xavier gets a meeting with Logan and advises him that they need his help, and they know he's a mutant. Uh, he decides he's okay where he is, though, although he'll keep them in mind. And then we cut to Fury in his flying Ferrari. So he's not particularly low-key in this, when all of a sudden he's jumped by another Baron Strucker. And turns out this is one of the life model decoys. And you get the feeling from the conversation, because you got to have a conversation, that this is just going to keep happening. Where Strucker had all sorts of these synths just like in storage somewhere. Now they're just going to get sent out at him every once in a while. So Fury swerves all over the place, which must be terrifying, and is able to shake the LMD off where it crashes into the street. Look at all those buildings, eh? Isn't that nuts? It's crazy to see, like, Liefeld lines, and then, like, buildings that could exist in 3D space. So, he was able to get rid of the Strucker bot, but by shaking him off, he's lo he can't get control in time. All he's able to do is steer it towards the lake to try and avoid just the general population here. Again, these are kind of typical Liefeld poses, actually. The arms flung out while people run away. But, like, way more detail in the background. And he crashes into the lake, and his flying Ferrari explodes. And that's the end of Nick Fury, as far as anybody can tell. Which says to me these guys haven't watched Winter Soldier yet. Nick Fury never dies straight away. So at his funeral, Dum Dum Dugan advises Logan that he's been recommended as the new head of S.H.I.E.L.D. And Logan wonders whether that's really the wisest course of action, seeing as how he's their newest recruit. But... Uh, Dum Dum Dugan kind of clears that up real quick by saying, yeah, Nick figured the same. He already cut through the red tape. So that's it. You're just the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. now. And we end with Wolverine as the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. And it wraps up very abruptly. The man called Wolverine did indeed become the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., a circumstance that would have a profound effect on the mutants of the, this reality. Wolverine uses his authority to stop Stephen Lang from recreating the Sentinels, thus the woman called Jean Grey, could would never venture to the moon to try and stop them, and this reality would never know Dark Phoenix. 
Further, Wolverine used his position to discredit Senator Robert Kelly and defeat his Mutant Registration Act. This not only halted the government persecution of mutants, but it also averted the dark future foretold by Kate Pride Rasputin. This once savage beast man would, through his influential position, teach this reality to peacefully coexist with his mutant population, and for that alone, his name would be revered for all posterity. And that's it. That feels very short. I don't think it is, though. Yeah, that's 26 pages. That's plenty. It's more like um, Valentino thought it was more important to show how he, like his first couple of missions, than it would be to show him doing any of, the, any of this other stuff where he's helping out mutants, which you would think would be the focus and feels like it maybe should have been. And if anything else, um, this last page does kind of end up being a bit of an indictment of Nick Fury. <laughs> Wolverine could have done your job a shit ton better, apparently. And then we end with... Uh, there's a couple of these in the early what-ifs. They're gone by the time we get to issue 24, I think, which is the one with Wolverine as Lord of the Vampires. This is What If Aunt May Was a Mutant with Claws, and it's a one-page gag without really any gags, where, you know, Peter and Aunt Mary Jane are over at May's, and they eat dinner, and they're they're stuffed, and they're going to go see a show. And she's like, oh, but what about dessert? And like, no, we're, we're stuffed. And, and they go to leave, and then she pops her claws, and she's like, no, you're staying. And like, shit, yeah, we're staying. And, you know, they go run and sit down again, and she uses the claws to cut the pie. But, you know, the implication is, man, she was going to stab the shit out of Peter and Mary Jane. And that's it. And then there's another one. What if Captain America hadn't been thawed out? That's just somebody taking a picture with frozen Captain America. What if the Punisher didn't use guns and he's spanking uh, terrorists? And somebody thought this was funny. I don't know why. It's not like they needed to fill this thing up. You know what's weird? I don't think there's any ads in this thing. You know, we get a bunch of letters. We get the next issue thing going on. And then at the end, we get a subscription thing. And then a little bit of extra ads. That's weird. So they had 32 pages. They just didn't have anything to fill it with? There are no ads within the comic itself. That's super strange. Anyway, so that's it for What If Number 7. Um, you know, Liefeld's contribution was pretty rough, but looked interesting over Val's breakdowns. You know what else is interesting is just how much help Rob had on his rise to, to popularity. Hawk and Dove, when he starts making his name, he's got Carl Castle fixing up his art all over the fucking place, and his editor just, you know, ripping his fucking art to shreds and re you know putting it back together again. On this, he's got Val laying everything out for him, even probably doing a lot of his backgrounds for him. And he's got Scott Williams inking. I didn't even really mention that over the course of the book. This is probably the best example of that. You think where he goes from here, it's New Mutants, where he's got Bob Wyacek inking him, and probably some pretty strict scripts coming from Louise Simonson. And then by the time when he gets popular enough, that's when he starts inking himself and getting people kicked off books and bringing in his own scripters. It's an interesting sort of cycle, because I don't think there's any way around it. You know, you want to be like, oh, you know, if Rob had just stuck around and learned some stuff, and then you go, well, no, Rob would never do that. And then by the end of 1992, he's a multimillionaire, and he's produced, what, like 30 comics in his life? Yeah, like, why would he ever change at that point? Yeah, it's interesting. What if? What if Rob Liefeld had work ethic? <laughs> well, no, he had, uh, I'm not, which isn't the same as hustle. Rob Liefeld has hustle. Just not for comics, just for shilling. <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it for this one. I'd say we might do more What If down the road. I don't know if we will, though. I feel like we've kind of done the two most interesting ones, at least from the 1989 release of the title. The earlier version might have all sorts of stuff. I, don't, I haven't looked into it too deeply. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notifications so you know when the next one's coming out. Go and subscribe on my Patreon. That'll give you access to everything I do from the Blood Force stuff, the pages and the finished comics, to the YouTube videos before they get out to YouTube, as well as some Patreon-exclusive content. 
You can also follow me on Instagram and DM me there for commissions. So there, this this was the the olive branch to um, uh, Rob Liefeld fans. Uh, probably about twenty to twenty five minutes of backhanded compliments. <laughs> I apologize. I can't be completely sincere with compliments for Liefeld. Uh, what can you do? Anyway, um, oh yeah, uh, Merry Christmas. And uh, uh, shit, I'm gonna do put out another thing tomorrow anyway. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.